is the greatest billionaire entrepreneur of all time? You guys get to decide. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan, I believe in you, and this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. So up today, we're looking at Jeff Bezos versus Pierre Omidyar. Who do you think is the greatest? Up first is Jeff Bezos with a net worth of $137 billion. He went from working on Wall Street to founding Amazon.com, the world's most valuable company, on a cross-country road trip and becoming the richest man on the planet. He's up against Pierre Omidyar, who's worth $10.5 billion, who went from working for Claris, an Apple computer subsidiary, to founding eBay and becoming a billionaire at the age of 31. Also, if you want to know what Jeff Bezos and other successful entrepreneurs have to say about building unstoppable confidence, check out my two 254 Confidence Series where every day for the next 254 days I will send you a morning video for free to help you build your confidence. The link to join is in the description below. The stress primarily comes from not taking action. So let's kick it off with Jeff Bezos rule number one, take bold bets. My job, one of my jobs as the leader of Amazon is to encourage people to be bold. And people love to focus on things that aren't yet working. Um, and that's good, it's human nature. That kind of divine discontent can be very helpful. But uh, you really, you know, it's incredibly hard to get people to take bold bets. And you need to encourage that. And if you're gonna take bold bets, they're gonna be experiments. And if they're experiments, you don't know ahead of time whether they're gonna work. Uh, experiments uh, are by their very nature uh, prone to failure, but big successes, a few big successes compensate for dozens and dozens of things that didn't work. So, you know, bold bets, AWS, Kindle, Amazon Prime, our third party seller business, all of those things are examples of bold bets that, uh, that, that did work and they pay for a lot of experiments. I've made billions of dollars of failures at Amazon.com, literally billions of dollars of failures. And uh, uh, you know, you might remember Pets.com or Cosmo or you know, you know, give myself a root canal with no anesthesia very easily. Uh, none of those things are fun, but they, but they also they don't matter. What really matters is companies that don't continue to experiment. Companies that don't embrace failure, they eventually get in a desperate position where they, the only thing they can do is make a kind of Hail Mary bet at the very end of their corporate existence. Whereas companies that are you know, uh, making bets all along, even you know, big bets, but not bet the company bets. I don't, I don't believe in bet the company bets. That's when you're desperate. That's, that's the last thing you can do. Over to Pierre Omidyar, rule number one, just go and do it. When you look at the accomplishments of, of uh, accomplished people, and you say, boy, that must have been really hard. You know, when you look at something that looks hard, that was probably easy. And conversely, when you look at something that looks easy, that was probably hard. And so you're never gonna know which is which until you actually go and do it. So just go and do it, try, learn from it. You, you know, you'll fail at some things, but that's a learning experience that you need so that you can take that on to the next experience. Um, and don't let people who you may respect uh, and who you believe know what they're talking about, don't let them tell you it can't be done because often they will tell you it can't be done and uh, it's just because they don't have the courage to try it. Back to Jeff Bezos, rule number two, focus on your customers. The secret sauce of Amazon, where well, there are several principles at Amazon, but the number one thing that has made us successful by far is obsessive compulsive focus on the customer as opposed to obsession over the competitor. And I talk so often to um, other CEOs and uh, some other CEOs and also founders and entrepreneurs and I can tell that even though they're talking about customers, they're really focusing on competitors. And it is a huge advantage to any company if you can stay focused on your customer instead of your competitor. And back to Pierre Omidyar, rule number two, don't take no for an answer. There's something about an entrepreneur that um, is somewhat sort of anti-establishment, somewhat disrespectful of the previous generation. Um, and although that can grate people the wrong way a little bit, that's a really important element, actually. You need to be passionate about what you want to work on um, and, and uh, don't 
take no for an answer when when people out there are giving you advice and saying no, this will never work. I mean, you know, you look at eBay. The idea that that in 1995 that you could create something over the internet, which is this brand new thing that nobody you know was really using at the time, except for scientists and academics, and um, and it would be a place where strangers could actually do business with one another, could actually like exchange merchandise for for, for money um, without ever meeting. You know, and the notion that people could actually buy and sell cars over the internet. I mean, that's crazy, right? right? Yeah. It's totally crazy. So, in fact, lots and lots of people told me that was crazy. Um, and I didn't, you know, I, I have to say, I didn't have this vision, oh, it's gonna take over the world, it's gonna be this fantastic thing overnight. I didn't have that kind of delusion either. But um, but I did say, you know what, there's something there's something worth trying here. Uh, it's, not, it's not crazy. Now I've got two really special bonus rules from Jeff and Pierre on how to be resourceful and know your mission that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, I wanna know who you voting for, who moves on to round two, Jeff Bezos or Pierre Omijar, let me know in the comments below. I spent an unusual amount of time with my uh, grandparents and especially with my grandfather on the ranch. So he had a ranch in South Texas and I would spend my summers there from age four to 16. And they, when I was four, they were taking me for the summer to kind of give my parents a break. You know, sort of, because they were so young. Um, and it was useful. I was a handful, I'm sure. And, uh, and anyway, he, 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 he created the illusion for me when I was four years old that I was helping him on the ranch which of course could not have been true, but I believed it. And, um, and then as, by the time I was 16, of course, I was actually helping on the ranch. I, you know, I, could, I can fix prolapsed cattle. I can, you know, we did all of our own veterinary work. Some of the cattle even survived. Um, <laughs> and uh, we fixed windmills and laid you know, water pipelines and built fences and barns and fixed, that, fixed the bulldozer that you guys talked about. And so one of the things that's so interesting about that lifestyle and about my grandfather is he did everything himself. You know, he didn't call a vet if one of the animals was sick. He figured out what to do himself. And uh, so what does it mean? No delegation? Being resourceful, I think, mm -hmm. is the, you know, that you can always, you can't, if there's a problem, there's a solution. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you, as you mature and, and get into the business world and anything you do on a team, you very quickly realize that it's not about just your own resourcefulness, it's about mm -hmm. team resourcefulness and how does that work. And What I realized through the eBay experience was that people are hungry for personal communication and personal relationships that they can build around a shared area of interest. And I received hundreds of letters, thousands of letters from, from eBay users that say, you know, eBay's restored my faith in humanity. I've met my best friends on eBay. You know, there have been people that have been married that have met on eBay. I mean, it, it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit strange. It's definitely not the, uh, you know, the majority of the, of the users, but there's something special going on there. And I think what it is, is when you give people a forum in which to communicate, and, and communicate around a shared area of interest, no matter you know, what socioeconomic classes they come from, what neighborhoods they come from, or geographies, they realize that they're human beings, and they realize that they can be a community together. So what we want to do with our philanthropy is to just help people rediscover that, uh, in, especially in America. I think we've lost a lot of that in America. It's something that here in Europe, um, we're a lot more uh, familiar with, we're a lot more comfortable with the notion of an individual being a part of a community and having a responsibility to, to be a part of that community. Uh, in America, through a, very, you know, a variety of reasons that I won't go, uh, go into here, I have some thoughts on it, um, you know, people have become isolated and people are afraid to talk to their neighbors sometimes. But th at the core, people do want to be part of a community. And all we have to do now is figure out how to, how to kind of rekindle that a little bit. And that's, that's our mission. We've got you know, I, I'm young, I'm 33 years old. Uh, my wife and I are 33 years old. Uh, we've got at least 50 good years ahead of us to work on this, and uh, it's gonna be a lifetime pursuit. My last round one video was Oprah Winfrey against Gabe Newell. If you wanna go cast your vote there too, go check out the link next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Your real work is to figure out where your power base is.